Think about these words. Remember, we are continuing our worship series on pivot. Today is pivoting in vision from problem fixing to possibility. Really exciting. Um, so let us hear these words. We come today into this sacred place to create. Our task is not to fix. Our task is to dream of what might be and then build it. Our task is to imagine something new and bright and good for all creation and then fashion it. We come today into this sacred place longing for shalom, dreaming for shalom. We hope to leave inspired to create it. Today's reading is from Matthew 14. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns, and when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and he cured the sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and he blessed and he broke the loaves and he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and all were filled and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And by Maya Angelou, we all have that possibility, that potential and that promise of seeing beyond the seeming. For the wisdom contained in these holy words, we give thanks. Amen. laughing at. The women don't get counted. That's another sermon. We're not going to talk about that today, but I do recognize that there is some problematic pieces of that text. Have compassion for everyone you meet, even if they don't want it. What seems conceit, bad manners, or cynicism is always a sign of things no ears have heard, no eyes have seen. You don't know what wars are going on down where the spirit meets the bone. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. We have a problem. Society, you, me. We have a problem. We love problems. We love to talk about what's wrong. Some of us make our living off problems. We meet about problems. We march against problems. We ponder the problems plaguing society. We love problems. And we want to fix them. And that can often be a problem. Why? Think about it for just a second. It encourages us to stay within the structure and paradigm that already exists in the world. No, let's say, no coloring outside the box, right? If, right, we're just trying to fix the problem it is. So today, we are going to think about what it means to pivot from problem fixing to possibility creating. Let me tell you a story. In a graduate seminar years ago, Dr. G, as he is called, asked his students, many of whom were organizers and community activists, 
to write a one-page paper describing a problem they were addressing and how they were attempting to address it. Here's a sample of what they wrote. Fighting for police accountability in San Francisco's police department. Restricting or resisting racist housing policies that force black families from the city. Confronting homophobia in schools. Demanding anti-racist classrooms. Struggling for environmental justice. When the class gathered together the next time, Dr. G pointed out the terms they were using, fight, resist, confront, demand, struggle, all words against the oppression that faced the communities they were serving. He asked them to write another one-page paper that described their work. This time, they could, use, they could not use any of the following words. Resist, defend, disrupt, demand, fight, struggle, confront, destroy, deconstruct. Instead, they were to use the words Reimagine, dream, discover, create, design, play, invent, visualize, build. You see, Dr. G realized that vocabulary shapes our thoughts and actions. It changes our energy. The students told Dr. G it was one of the hardest assignments they ever had because they were required to really imagine what they wanted to see instead of articulating what they wanted to eliminate. Dr. G was pushing his students into their imagination. Imagination is powerful. Robin Kelly in his book Freedom Dream says imagination may be one of the most revolutionary ideas available to us. Revolutionary, governing body, that's almost as exciting as radical, isn't it? When the disciples came to Jesus after a long day, they saw a problem. They were in a deserted place. There were a lot of people wandering around who were hungry. The disciples wanted to get rid of the people, have the people fend for themselves. That's fixing the problem. Jesus, of course, had other ideas. They need not go away. You give them something to eat. Which, of course, created another problem. The disciples only had five loaves and two fish, not enough for such a great crowd. We know how the story goes. Everyone got enough to eat, and there were plenty of leftovers. Jesus was pushing his students into their imagination, encouraging them to imagine the loved community where everyone had enough to thrive. Comprehensive well-being. Or, as Maya Angelou said, Jesus was pushing them into that potential and that promise of seeing beyond the seeming, coloring outside the lines. The problem with problem loving is that we become okay with talking about the problems. In fact, many of us, and I include myself in this, many of us are more than okay. <laughs> talking about the problem. Uh, and we are uncomfortable with using our imaginations to find solutions. We know what we are fighting against, don't we? We just need to take two steps out into the world or turn on one of our devices and we will be bombarded with what we are fighting against. What are we dreaming what are we imagining for the world? What do we want to create? Makes me think of the movie Field of Dreams. And I'm looking around the crowd here this morning, and I believe most of us uh, know that movie or would know that movie. It's where Kevin Costner's character Ray, a farmer from Iowa, hears a voice one night in his cornfield saying to him, if you build it, they will come. Ray feels he needs to act and decides to build a baseball field even though people taunt him and think he's lost his mind. 
the movie explores, oh, and you know he almost loses his farm. Think about that for a second. The movie explores what can happen when we act on our imagining to create something amazing. Now you're all going to want to go home and watch that movie. We, here at Peace, actually talk quite a bit about God's dream for the world. Justice, equity, shalom. We're doing a lot of work around what that might look like. We're actually trying to live it out. But what if we pivoted in how we thought about what we are doing? For example, instead of working against the oppressive empire, which how many times have I lifted that up from this space right here? Instead of working against the oppressive empire, what if we thought about creating the loved community where everyone had what they needed to thrive? Would we begin to think and act differently? Would our energy change? How many people, after talking about uh, the evil empire or the oppressive empire, start feeling sad and down? And like, oh my gosh, we will never accomplish that. Yeah. What if we talked about, let's create the loved community right here where we are. Anybody's energy changing right now? D, I see you smiling. Right? Like, oh my gosh, right? Does it not change our energy when we pivot just a wee bit? When Debbie Darcy and I, as part of our work for Children's Defense Fund, began sitting down with people in the community, stakeholders who are parents, children, public servants, educators, we found a common thread. And I'm just going to say, I actually think it was kind of accidental that we started asking questions about dreaming. I'm not sure how intentional it was, but we did it. When we asked about what their dream for the world might look like so their family could be happy, people said, in one way or another. They wanted to have a safe place where they could be authentically who they are. They wanted to belong. They didn't talk about being anti-racist. They didn't talk about the absence of oppressive structures. They talked about belonging, what they wanted to see. Their words will shape our actions going forward. Isn't that what God's dream for creation is all about? What would the world look like if we began to imagine a beloved community where everyone mattered and belonged, a place where people could be authentically who they are and belong instead of thinking about how we can overcome oppressive systems? Like the story today from Matthew's Gospel, people in the crowd gathered around Jesus that day on the shore. They mattered to Jesus. He had compassion for them. He made sure everyone had what they needed. And there were still leftovers. Jesus moved past the problem and created possibility. He was not working to stop hunger. He was working to create beloved community. The loved community, a place of abundance, a place where everyone matters and is recognized as a precious child of God, a place of belonging, a place of shalom. I want to invite you into a time of imagination this morning. If you didn't pick up a piece of paper and a couple of crayons on your way in, hold up your hand and we'll get those things to you. It's important. Everybody got what they need? You can use your binder. Isn't that uh, great that you have something to, uh, to use to hold your paper? Okay. Step away from the problems that are plaguing the world for just a moment. And step into your imagination and think about what the world might look like. A world where everyone belongs beloved community. Think about that. What does that look like to you? You can draw it. You can write it down. You can put words, whatever you want to do. Nobody is going to see this but you, unless you want to share it. But, uh, well, you will be sharing it a bit, but anyway. So just take a few seconds. It doesn't have to be great. Just like, what does it look like to have a world where it's beloved community? 
shalom, comprehensive well being. What does that look like? While you're doing that, I just want you to remember to think in words like reimagine, dream, discover, create, design, play, invent, visualize, build. Remember our vocabulary shapes our thoughts and actions. How are we doing? I, I just see almost that your heads are still down, so I feel like it might still be working. Okay. Now, think about one thing you might do. Actually, one thing you are prepared to do to create this world, draw it or write it down. What one thing are you prepared to do to build, create the world you just drew on your piece of paper? You can do more than one, but let's start with one. trios, however you want to do it. I don't really care. Tell them what thing you are going to do. Tell somebody else what you are going to do. Why? Because then you got to do it. <laughs> the other person's going to make sure you're accountable and it's going to go both ways. So if you're sitting with your spouse, that may be really great or it may not be great. I'm looking at Paul Dietrich right now and he's looking around for somebody besides Brenda. So... <laughs> So you all decide how you want to do it. Take a few minutes. You can chat away. Tell people what you're doing, why you're doing it. Doesn't matter to me. Let's get this out into the world.
a lot of joy, so that means that we have got to start. Does anybody feel like they want to just like, a couple of people just put out there, uh, out loud, what you're going to do? Anybody? Throw it into the world. Nobody? Gather signatures. Gather signatures. Melissa? Educate, what does that mean, Melissa? Um, well, I'm going to tell you what I wrote. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I wrote, create a world of respect and care for all things living and how to understand how we are all connected. Okay. So there's the education. Okay, think about what actual action you're going to take. All right, so this is the organizer in me coming out now. So <laughs> does anybody else want to brave it? Just, okay, go ahead, Al. You're, oh, excellent. Al's going to gather the uh, street that Al and Roger live on and have a block party. Awesome. Okay. Put that paper in a place you can see it every day. And do that one thing. Every day. Do that <laughs> one thing. Well, Roger, you can't do that one thing every day. Or Al, you can't do that one thing every day. <laughs> But do find something you can do every day. Let's see what happens when we do that. You see, we have the power to create a world where everyone belongs. We have the power to create a world where everyone belongs. We can use our imaginations to dream what that looks like and then our, use our will and our power to actually create this world. Our imaginations are revolutionary. We all have that possibility, that potential, that promise of seeing beyond the seeming. Let us begin to think about what might happen, what might happen if we pivoted from problem fixing, possibility creating. Let us pray these words into being. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts and minds to possibilities that surpass our imagination. Stretch us to move beyond what is and what has always been done. Challenge us to add action to our hope and longing. Inspire us with the abundance of your creation and the wonder of your creative work. Let us become possibility creators alongside you, O oh God. Amen, and may it be. Oh. <laughs>